Coming up on Ag Week TV, Minnesota releases its dicamba use rules for 2018. Some organic growers say fake imports are ruining the market for their crops and consumers. I'm Michelle Rourke here at Ag Outlook 2017, the annual meeting of the South Dakota Soybean Association. We'll talk to cookbook author and blogger Molly Ye about life on a farm near East Grand Forks. Welcome to AgWeek TV, I'm Shauna Olson. The Minnesota Department of Ag has announced new restrictions on the use of dicamba herbicide for the 2018 growing season. It's in addition to those announced by the EPA in October. The move comes after many non-dicamba soybean growers complained of dicamba drift damage to their crops this year. After reviewing the new EPA label restrictions and other input Minnesota Ag Commissioner Dave Fredrickson issued some additional protocols for the 2018 season. The application cutoff is June 20th and the maximum temperature is 85 degrees. North Dakota's Ag Commissioner also recently announced additional restrictions. They're designed to protect non-dicamba growers while keeping it as a tool for other growers. North Dakota's rules include training for applicators, but an ag instructor we talked to says that could be a problem during farmers' busy season. The online training is going to be an option. That, I think that'll solve a lot of problems. Um, I get because my biggest concern was somebody who might just be freshly hired on in April, it's really busy, or even June, and they don't have the dicamba training. You know, what do you do? Fredrickson says they'll be closely monitoring the situation with the new restrictions this season. Big crowd for the annual South Dakota Soybean Association Ag Outlook meeting. It's a chance for farmers to get a jump start on their plans for the 2018 growing season from inputs to marketing. Michelle Rook has highlights. This year's Ag Outlook meeting here in Sioux Falls focused on helping farmers increase yield and profitability in a tough price environment. It featured the record soybean producer who raised 171 bushels and says South Dakota farmers can too by analyzing their data. They need to be a student of the crop. They need to understand where yields come from. They need to understand where yield is lost. And without data, that's hard to make that decision. Farmers also want to profitably market those higher soybean yields, and analyst John Roach says there's opportunities ahead. Growers have to be ready when we get the, the rally, we get the sell signal to pull the trigger. We, we probably won't last very long unless there's some real weather dynamic that's driving us. Plus, Carolyn Thompson shared how farmers can pass their farm to the next generation. But what we need to know is what matters most to you and your family. What do you want to do to keep this operation going? Ag Outlook is also the annual meeting of the South Dakota Soybean Association. Members passed a resolution to support STSU's Precision Ag facility and find funding for the $30 million balance. We got to lean on the legislators. Uh, you know, it's the only program in the nation so far, let alone the state. So it's it's you know it's very cutting edge for our state and very important. He says they also approved cleanup language on wetland delineations and non-meandered waters. In Sioux Falls, I'm a Shawrock reporting for Ag Week. American Crystal Sugar Company is projecting its initial gross beet payment for 2017 is $46 per ton. That's up about $3.50 a ton from last year, primarily because the beets are sweeter and more valuable. The company also announced it's expanding its Drayton, North Dakota factory at the co-op's annual meeting. President and CEO Tom Astrup says they're spending about $25 million a year over a potential four-year project. They expect to increase the slice capacity and output there by 30 percent. We have uh, ideas of increasing uh, by, by a couple of thousand tons per day on top of a factory that currently slices about uh, 6,900 tons per day. We spent about 20 to 25 million dollars last year. We'll spend about the same in the summer of 2018 and we're taking it year by year and we'll continue to uh, revise the design as we move forward. Astrup says they chose Drayton in part because of the number of beets now grown there. They want to process them closer. Overall, the company produced 12 million tons of beets on 400,000 acres. A decade ago, it took 500,000 acres to grow the same amount of beets. There's growing concern among some organic farmers that fake organic imports are flooding the market. Mikkel Pates talked to one grower who says it's pushing down prices and could erode consumer confidence. 
Edward Fett has been farming in southeast South Dakota since 1973, and he's been organic since 1995. He raises sheep, soybeans, and small grains, but now he thinks fraudulent organic imports are ruining the market, both for producers and possibly for consumers. Are they really going to trust the organic label when they're finding out that this is fraudulent imported stuff coming in? The whole thing is about consumer confidence. How can the consumer feel comfortable at buying the organic label when it's not standing for what it's supposed to be standing for? Fett turned to organic farming to avoid chemical exposure, but over the last couple of years he's seen a big fall off in prices for certified organics. Organic soybeans have dropped from $26 a bushel to $17, and he's having a hard time breaking even. I basically got two close by soybean buyers here that I use because at that kind of price, I'm losing money at it anyway, at that kind of a price, I can't afford to freight on them to go much further. Some U.S. organic marketing experts believe up to 70% of organic imports may be fraudulent, mainly from India, Russia, and Ukraine. Why don't they focus on these fraudulent imports coming in so it's feasible for more organic producers to get on the ship? And that's very discouraging to me. One solution being considered by the National Organic Program is that certifiers should follow European-style practices of testing shipments from 13 high-risk countries. In Lenox, South Dakota, this is Michael Pates for Ag Week. The U.S. House is considering an Organic Consumer and Farmer Protection Act, which growers hope will be in the 2018 Farm Bill. For more on this story, check out Mickle's article in the latest Ag Week magazine. Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll talk to blogger and cookbook author Molly Ye at her East Grand Forks farm. temperatures from Grand Forks all the way to Williston, so stay warm out there. It'll never start. It'll start. When the last thing you need is equipment that won't start, turn up the heat with a portable Honda generator from Home of Economy. Rugged, dependable, and quite possibly the best friend you'll ever have on the job. Pick one up today at the guaranteed lowest price, only at Home of Economy, where your dollar buys more. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the Superior your choice today with superior grain equipment. Ask about our winter discounts available now. Intelligent farming means more crop from every acre. That starts with smart machines and precision application. Introducing the new Rogator C-Series from Challenger, featuring a newer, smarter, more precise way to apply fertilizers and nutrients, more accurately and more efficiently than ever before, resulting in less overlap and less crop damage, all to make you more productive and more profitable. To find out more, contact Butler Machinery today. Make every minute of the growing season count. Schedule your equipment for a genuine Case IH parts and service uptime inspection at Titan Machinery. Our professional service technicians have the training and experience to pinpoint and repair problems before they have a chance to shut you down during the season. Avoid the high cost of in-season downtime. Give yourself the peace of mind knowing your equipment is ready to work. Schedule your equipment today by going to uptime18.com or calling your local Titan Machinery dealer. That's Titan Machinery, providing you with genuine Case IH parts and service. Get ready for the first annual Northern Corn and Soybean Expo. This one-day only event features speaker Jay Lair and is hosted by Market to Market's Mike Pearson. With a large corn and soybean trade show and breakout education and networking sessions, you can't miss the first annual Corn and Soybean Expo, Tuesday, February 13th, only at the Fargo Dome. We all know the classic story of farm kids who can't wait to get to the big city, but more and more that trend is reversing and young people are returning to rural farms. Rose Dunn talked to blogger and cookbook author Molly Ye, who works from her East Grand Forks farm. That's right, Shauna. In large part, that trend has only been possible since the internet. That's true for Molly Ye. She and her husband moved back to his sugar beet farm in 2013, and since then, she's become a very big deal in the food world. 
<laughs> it just felt so right that we came out here once and I took one look around and I thought, okay, I'm moving here whether Nick's with me or not. Molly Ye was raised in Chicago, then went to school at Juilliard in New York. That's where she met her husband. Nick Hagen was raised on a farm near East Grand Forks. They both pursued careers in music. Most of the time when I play now, it's with like friends from college who have started their own ensembles. But after a few years of big city life, they decided to return to the farm that's been in his family for five generations. Well, I love it here. It's I mean, I love the winter, and I just love being cozy. That's when Molly really started to pursue her passion for cooking and discovered Midwest I comfort food. The Midwest does winter food the best. Hot dishes and vegetable -less salads. And those are some of the things that I fell in love with the most when I moved here. Living in New York, you can get any kind of food from all over the world, but you can't really get a hot dish. And so coming here, I thought, what am I gonna learn about food? I've lived in New York, I've tasted all the foods. <laughs> and then I got here and I learned about um, lefsa and tater tot hot dish, wild rice hot dish, and all of these delicious things. Molly loves being able to grow fresh food right outside her door. They have chickens. Here they are. Oh, they're beautiful. They're huge, right? And her favorite discovery was her rhubarb patch. I learned that every good Minnesotan has a freezer full of frozen rhubarb at all times. Molly has attracted international attention from the comfort of her farm home. She's published a cookbook inspired from her popular and award-winning blog, My Name is Yay, and has a large social media following. Probably the most important thing that he ever taught me in the kitchen was how to put the tater tots down in neat rows and columns. She's attracted attention from some of the biggest names in the business, including Bon Appetit and Vanity Fair. She's one of Forbes 30 Under 30 for 2017 and one of People Magazine's 50 food faves. I'm just having so much fun. If you're still looking for a last-minute Christmas gift with local flavor, her cookbook is called Molly on the Range. Besides great recipes, it's a fun read about her life on the farm. She even autographed mine the day we came out to interview her. Nice. Thanks, Rose. Hundreds of farmers of all ages gathered in Grand Forks this week to learn how to better relate to each other and the public. Organizers of the Prairie Grains Conference want to bring older and younger producers together so they can learn from each other. We want the, these younger farmers and ag professionals uh, to talk about the solutions because they have a different perspective and I think that's what we can learn from. As more and more people move away from the farm, perceptions about agriculture and the environment are changing. So it's important to keep consumers informed. By and large, they support farmers, which is a good thing. They have questions about farming practices, and so part of the discussion is, you know, what are consumers thinking about agriculture in Minnesota today, and then what do we do about it to be proactive in agriculture, to make sure we can help answer their questions and maintain our social license to operate going forward. The annual event is organized by seven North Dakota and Minnesota farm groups. It was an icy, windy week for many. What will the coming week bring? Your AgriWeather forecast is next. And later, we'll visit a country church that celebrates Christmas in a very special way. Get ready for the first annual Northern Corn and Soybean Expo. This one-day only event features speaker Jay Lair and is hosted by Market to Market's Mike Pearson. With a large corn and soybean trade show and breakout education and networking sessions, you can't miss the first annual Corn and Soybean Expo, Tuesday, February 13th, only at the Fargo Dome. We're excited to bring you the new Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you. Download the new Ag Week app today. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily, Family owned and operated since 1966, 
Luckins specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment, or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. Weather portion of Ag Week now. There are once again signs of a pattern change. You may recall for the last couple of weeks, we've had a jet stream coming right out of the north across the northern plains. But the weather has not been really all that cold. Western High Plains quite mild, Great Lakes area colder, but we really haven't had that surge of frigid air. And one of the reasons behind that is my second talking point tonight. Arctic air is kind of limited this year. There's been a lot of warm water. The Arctic Ocean is now mostly frozen over, but the ice extent is much less than it typically is at this time of year. And so there's just not as much cold air, not as many directions cold air can come from. Another thing that's been limiting the cold weather has been the fairly highly uh, covered lack of snow cover across the Northern Plains region. You may recall going back to mid-November, there was a forecast of the winter outlook of below average to much below average temperatures across much of the Northern Plains and Northern Rockies with a forecast of generally mild conditions through the South and much of the Corn Belt with equal chances. Well, granted, it's only two, three weeks into December, but we have a ways to go before our winter will be below average. It's been cool the last few days. The jet stream pattern has dipped south finally and there are some signs that we may get a stronger dip but the cold weather has mostly just been lurking up there in Canada and it's cold enough. I mean if this air mass were to move south in mass it would be below average across much of the country. Well there are some signs sometime after midweek we may finally see a change to more of a, a troughiness along the west coast and the jet streams, which does a couple of things. It's going to pull some of that cold air back southward, and it may eventually open up the chance for some southwest to northeast moving weather systems, which are more prolific moisture and snow producers in the Midwest. We'll see. This week is not looking especially wet, except Mississippi River Valley southeast and then parts of the Atlantic will be getting some rain and snow. Some parts of the Pacific Northwest will get some snow as that troughiness builds in, and through the middle just scattered quick lightning fast squaws of mostly light snow with not much moisture and that's really all we're looking for this week. I foresee the possibility of the cold weather lingering and maybe getting a little bit colder around the region over Christmas week, probably concentrated Great Lakes, but some of this is going to be some below zero air it looks like to me. So that's uh, one thing that will be a little bit different for the last week of the year and I think in that cold air there could be some snowfalls coming out across the Plain States Probably not huge moisture producers, but maybe finally some measurable snow. Hasn't been that cold so far. Arctic air has been limited, but there are some signs that we may finally be getting some snow and some cold air right around time for the holidays, of course, perhaps leading to a colder January. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. Micro Essentials is a unique product, so it makes it different than other products. It has four different nutrients, nitrogen, 
phosphorus, sulfur, which is two forms of sulfur, and zinc in every granule. The sulfate sulfur, we get the bulk of the use of it the first year. The elemental breaks down over time. So it's a huge benefit for the grower. It's giving them the opportunity to get more nutrients in one. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmer's job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have a, a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms, and as a result, uh, more people can eat. One country church has taken the concept of a live nativity scene to a whole new level for decades. Holmes United Methodist near Reynolds, North Dakota is a small church, just a few hundred members. But it makes a very big impact every year during the Christmas season. This year they're celebrating the 30th anniversary of this special Christmas program. Joy to the world. Christmas isn't Christmas until we do this. And then it's Christmas. And she brought forth her firstborn son. And Christmas it is. And laid him in a manger. The Christmas story reenacted with music. <laughs> Wise men, baby Jesus in a manger, and live animals to add to the realism. <laughs> All inside a stable. It's not showy, but this is simple, it's straightforward, it's about the message, we're trying to be as accurate as we can, and we're friendly folks and we're having a, just, a, a, just a good time of fellowship with people, so it, 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 it has that country flavor, if you will. The idea started about 30 years ago with church member Paul Lentz. When they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts. I seen it when I was a kid. Oh, my folks said we're going to a live nativity, and it never left. It never left me. And the concept has never left this country church or its members. It's gotten to be a big hit. Being a rural church, getting the animals in a barn to host it isn't a problem. My cousin's got the calves, and uh, Jim Sletton's got the sheep, and uh, uh, Jim and Lisa Ivers got the goats. And... Over the years, they've reenacted this special story to thousands of people, a few hundred each night, some from right here in Reynolds, others from all parts of the country. He's been here before, you know, you get kind of emotional when you come to this stuff and get to bring them when you grew up and everything, so it's, it's, it's good to come. This is the 29th year of this Christmas pageant, and Lentz has been here helping for everyone. Shows the really the true meaning of Christmas. Sleep in heavenly the event is held in Dwight and Sarah Ullman's barn. You can attend this year, December 22nd and 23rd. There are at least two programs a night, 7 p.m. and again at 7:30. They also offer sleigh rides and hot cider. 
Still ahead on AgWeek TV, a local ag equipment company marks a big day in a very big way. We're excited to bring you the new AgWeek app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your AgWeek news, weather, and the latest episodes of AgWeek TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take AgWeek with you. Download the new AgWeek app today. United Lease and Finance would like to wish everyone happy holidays and thank you for your business this past year. And we look forward to working with you in 2017. We're happy to work with our clients' lease transactions from inception to close. With leasing, you get flexible payment plans, improved cash flow, great rates, and easy terms. And leasing does not tie up credit. We'd love to go to work for you. Happy holidays from Roger, Troy, and Dale. And we wish you and your family the best and look forward to working with you next year. TrueFlex Land Rollers. TrueFlex Land Rollers are designed with today's farmer in mind. With a 42-inch roller diameter, features include a heavy-duty hinge and wing lock, true roller overlap, 3-inch replaceable roller shafts, hydraulic wing steer, and more. As manufacturers, we can custom build to any size. For questions, call us toll-free or check us out online. TrueFlex Land Rollers, a division of SprayFlex. Premier Shortline USA is your dealer for Meridian storage and grain handling. Fifty years ago, Meridian Manufacturing designed the first smooth wall hopper bin. This innovation set the standard for hopper bins across North America, completely self-cleaning with no obstructions. Smooth wall hopper bins have become the preferred choice for safe and efficient storage. For temporary grain storage to complete systems, contact Nate or Brent at Premier Shortline USA. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. It was a big week for Titan Machinery. The Ag and Construction Equipment Company celebrated its 10th anniversary as a publicly traded company on Tuesday by ringing the closing bell at the NASDAQ. <music> CEO David Myers did the honors surrounded by the company's leadership team. Titan was founded in 1980 and is based in West Fargo. It has a network of stores around the U.S. and several countries representing Case New Holland brands. Thanks for watching this week's edition of AgWeek TV. For all your ag news, go to agweek.com. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. See you next week.